<laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be getting a bloodhound, you know. <laughs> I wonder what Ryan Felipe learned. But, uh, I do not get Ryan Felipe. Hmm. He's like Justin Timberlake without the talent looks or humanity. He's what I call a PLB, <laughs> which is a pouty little bitch versus a <laughs> versus a WLB which is a whiny little bitch but it's like he just I'll forever think of him as like in 54 in his little like nut hugger shorts like doing his pouty metro ambisexual thing I, I don't get him All tell right, me well, how you really go. feel <laughs> okay, good. there are some questions at that family <laughs> reunion that's, that's good <laughs> so you that was an aside you learn from Reese but the important thing is you said you learn something because of the similarities she learns from the similarities to her family and you do as well and there's a positive in that yeah and I mean you know if you want to talk about movies that um, might have a little more gravitas or, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> or respectability you know up in the air I totally mm -hmm. related to um, you know George Clooney completely you know is has disconnected himself from his family mm -hmm. and then goes back to his sister's wedding in Wisconsin or Minnesota or whatever and that hotel, I don't know if it had a windmill or something, that, that place I could totally, I could smell that place because that is where I come from. You know, you right. can smell the stale cigarette smoke in there. And I could identify with like how he was like judging but trying to see it with like kinder eyes than what he obviously had grown up doing, you know. Um, and then, you know, it's still kind of not resolved. He still is kind of alone and unable to figure out how to connect with people by the end of that. So yeah. the process may not make the family more functional, but it makes you a better individual. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think you can actually apply the same ideas to any of your relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you may have uh, challenging friendships or um, relationships with coworkers, and just trying to find like things that will get them started talking on subjects that aren't really annoying to you <laughs> is not a bad thing. And you know, people like open up so easily when you start asking them and I mean there can be practical things like you know the person who's always talking about the weather believe me we all have like the weather channel person I don't know what age or what what happens yeah something snapped because she wasn't where, always that way but where it's pretty... like the weather channel is always on as white noise it goes right. from like QVC and the Quacker Factory show <laughs> to like the weather channel and I don't understand why that's always on for people but you know for some people it might be like ESPN you know. I'd understand it if she was doing something like she was an uh, Alaskan fisher or something like that and concerned about like what, what the weather is going to be like on <laughs> the seas But if you never leave something. your house? Right, that's the problem. But, you know. you know, maybe there's something about it that, like, she would like to think that she is more adventurous or it gives her a, a window into the outside world without her ever leaving her house. Yeah, I just feel like I'd rather call Steve Poole and talk to him about the weather than my mom. I might get more out of it. Well, certainly. <laughs> certainly. He's, he's so let me give you a, a hypothetical here. It's not even a hypothetical. It's a true story about me and my family, because I want to know my father, uh, many, many things wrong with him. We'll go into all the details. But he was like Johnny Appleseed. He's had kids around the country spreading, oh, that spreading kind of seed, seed. <laughs> like, wee! Doesn't it? And he was 60 when he had me. But I have, like, half-brothers in their 80s and younger than me, and uh, who, who knows what's going on. And, and I, I meet them from time to time. And so I met one who is about... Uh, I think that's in his 70s or mm -hmm. something recently in Portland. And he's telling the story, you know, because there's some questions. He had treated so many people so miserably. And, and he has a story about uh, he decided that he would finally go see my father before he died. It was uh, clearly he was on his deathbed for about a year and a half or something. So it was a long time on the mm -hmm. deathbed. And uh, my father had abandoned his family, taken everything, left the, his former wife with the kids, took all the money. The, uh, their lives were miserable after that. So he goes down, talks to my father with sort of an assertive game plan for let's interview him, let's learn a little bit something more about the family. And when asked, you know, uh, uh, about all this, he says, you know what, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it just the same. See, now what do you do with a response like that when you've gone in with a nice questioning, the interviewing, and you find out that people are just as awful as you thought they were? Maybe you could go into the awful, like, did you never think about, like, the You'd ramifications of like uh -huh. spreading your seed all over the country. I right. mean, there are ways to do that in a non, you know, non-confrontational, but cur just really curious way. Like, hey, how, you know, <laughs> what was your family life, life like growing up? Right. You know, like, where did you get this idea that it was okay to just keep kind of, you know, populating 
the world? Are you, are you listening to the Angel Maroney? Like, what's going on here? Like, is this part of, like, some sort of religious game plan or just, like... And, Warren, I have to tell you, like, I keep finding... I keep meeting friends who have stories like that where they have these parents who it either comes out later they didn't know that there were other families going on or, um, you know, that their Surprise. father their father was <laughs> like a rockabilly singer in the 40s and kind right. of just, you know, went around the country. And I don't like that one. <laughs> no. That's I mean, she's one. here in Seattle, too, my friend who has her dad like that. And, you know, I think it's more for you. Like, you know, you, you feel like you did what you could, right. you know. And a lot of these people are not very repentant, or you may not be getting, I mean, is it better to just kind of be in the dark about it and think maybe? I don't know. Would, I, I don't want to be in the dark, because I feel like that's the way my mother lives her life. And if, I think we want to, I want to know. If nothing else, you can try and get a complete medical history from them, <laughs> you know, because that helps with, like, the, you know, do they have a history of high blood pressure? Like, right. is, does breast cancer run in the family? Like, right. things like this are important to know. That's a good way to start because older people like to talk about their health issues. That's right? true. I'm starting. So, yeah, you're starting to do that too. <laughs> and I get together, and it's like, you know, and and you know, not really having any boundaries about what you're talking about. That you kicks know? in before the Weather Channel stuff is talking right, about your health. Right. Wow. I think once you know people have kids too, like they're kind of immune to talking about like poop and pee and anything scatological. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, you start thinking. I know I'm old. It's that's another book that could you know you know you're becoming officially old when you like start watching the weather channel or you know start detailing your medical history <laughs> to you know the checkout person at QFC <laughs> oh, or maybe so that's sorry. just me <laughs> <laughs> but they know you well and they get diagnosed in a second uh, exactly so I, I just I'm trying to get to the benefits here because I'll, I'll tell you <laughs> I, 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 I know how to talk to people I like that I do want more information and frankly the thing I'm embarrassed about is when I talk to my daughter is I can't draw a family tree like I can go back there's my father there's my mother and you know I might know little branches off to the side but I can't go back up I, I don't know anybody well is that a benefit that you could get from talking I to think your so. parents? I, I, I've thought about talking to my mom about that for that very reason because I'd like to draw the tree and know where they're from. I have very I mean, little they, clue. You know, I, I, I mean, this, this, this book is good for, you know, any kind of relationships, you right. know, it doesn't have to be like older generation, but one of the benefits is like just trying to kind of get a better sense of, of your roots and where you're from. And, you know, I think, um, I, don't, I don't know, like people lose it as they get older, but one thing they kind of retain is like great aunt judith and you know they they do remember like family lineage and stuff so that might be something and and you know asking if there's any photos that you can like <laughs> take with you um so i think you know a benefit is like even if you've been like damaged to the point where you don't really want to like you know the weather channel gives you a seizure or something you, wow. you know your daughter may want some sort of um <laughs> you know, a uh, chronicle of, of the family, too. So that's a good thing. I'm compared, I, I like that. I could draw that up for her. Yeah, I think people like to know where they're from. So know? it can be a family tree. It doesn't have to be the family tree of the functional family. It could still be a family tree of the dysfunctional family. <laughs> but then yeah. I could point out you that. You could actually make that kind of fun. You could be, you know, on the different branches, you could have, like, the crazy story about them. Right. You know, in parentheses. <laughs> like, we don't talk about this, you know, uncle because he was arrested for I don't know what. No, no, I don't know if there are any arrests, <laughs> but my great-great-grandfather, Sir George Etheridge, was the first author of the body novel. He originated the body novel. So well, there so you that's go. something to be really proud of. It's sort of like softcore porn per see, se. Uh, see, I would be really <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> you know, in looking at my brother's, like, family tree stuff he's compiled, you know, there was, like, you know, my whole family, all the works in the family were farmers, like right. Kansas, Midwest farmers. And he, he has traced us back to, like, 1768 Pennsylvania. So, you know, we go pretty far back. And there was, like, a Julius Caesar work, <laughs> which yeah. he died in child, it, it, as a child from, like, influenza or something. But, you know, what I'm curious about is, like, what were the parents thinking to call him Julius Caesar? Like, did they somehow get, like, the traveling salesman selling, like, the abridged version of Shakespeare or something? Or Maybe they thought school? nobody's used it for a long time. Could be. <laughs> Could be. You know, there's, like, the crazy names. Like, my grandpa's, grandpa's name was Lyman. My other grandpa's name was Reno, you know? Um, like, where'd the name Reno come from? It was a family name. 
wasn't like anybody got divorced in Nevada or anything. Uh, Lyman is clearly from Sprite's influence. I, no? no, it's a lemon and the lime together. It's Lyman. Oh, it's Lyman. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't think know, they you had don't know your beverages. Come I don't on. think they had that back in the day. I okay. think they were <laughs> <laughs> drinking sarsaparilla or something like that. So I know you mentioned a couple things before. I was going to mention the documentary "Must Read After My Death" by Morgan James, which is fascinating okay. because it's this grandmother who left behind. It's his grandmother who left behind all these audio tapes and pictures of this unknown history to everybody, and finally she had left this packet. Must read after my death for people to discover like this is really your family history and it opened up so many uh, explanations for him that it's completely fascinating to me but mm -hmm. do you have others besides Sweet Home Alabama and uh, <laughs> well you know I think and Beyond the Family Tree your book right of course published um, by um, Stuart Taborian Chang okay. STC um, StoryCorps is another big thing you know NPR has this program where they're collecting stories I think even at the EMP right now they have a exhibit where you can go in and record a uh, oral history of something which I think is kinda cool um, so there you know there's some books like that um, most of the books deal with genealogy though and I'm more interested in the storytelling um, aspect if nothing else it's like kind of a nice way to spend some time with somebody is just asking them about stuff um, you know in other movies like um, about Schmidt I was thinking of because and and the wrestler and crazy heart you know these kind of like <laughs> old guys who kind of start having regrets and you know well, I thought they're Jack cautionary. Nicholson was, was a, a, a tough call but then you move into Jeff Bridges <laughs> well you know you, you don't want to like get to a point where you have regrets about things no. you know like they went their whole life with you know not having any sort of relationship with their children you know and not surprisingly their children have a hard time wanting to start up any sort of relationship with them but you know if I was um, Evan Rachel Wood <laughs> the wrestler I would have been like this dude he may be my dad and I may not be down with that but that just as a guy he has got some stories that would be pretty interesting to t I would have like put the tape recorder on and tell me and, and <laughs> tell me about the time book. you had your like your um, testicle stapled like go well there's certainly <laughs> a great way to leave it because people can go ask their, their parents about any sort of ball damage that's been done uh, <laughs> but you, you may approach a functional family in a new way because of beyond our uh, the family tree but also there is your blog which I want to mention quickly oh, right. uh, things I want to punch in the face which has gotten great great press hilariously funny and certainly what I'd like to do with most of my relatives so thank you so much Jen Warwick and you let's like raise it. a toast oh, to yeah. the elusive functional family <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to my people.